Hey everyone, welcome back. This is BBD Tech and today we're featuring the Noctua U12A Chromax cooler. It's a pretty new cooler and it's featuring the fifth generation of Noctua's U12 series coolers. And what makes this cooler so special is that it's rivaling performances of a 140mm size cooler while maintaining a 120mm class case and PCIe compatibility. Now, let's see what we get in the box. Right off the bat, we get the Trusted Pro Grade Secure Firm 2 multi socket mounting system that Noctua has been using on many of their coolers. And the great thing about this is that when they have new uh, future sockets, Noctua provides a free hardware upgrade path for their coolers. And all you have to do is just send them an email and they'll ship one out to you. Then we have the Noctua NTH1 thermal compound, which is arguably one of the better uh, thermal compounds you're gonna get from one of these coolers. And then we have the PWM support and low noise adapters and a fan splitter. With the Noctua U12A, you're also getting a soldered interface between the heat pipes and the fins, which is arguably way more premium and a lot nicer than the cheaper coolers you see on the market that have a direct copper heat pipe configuration. The U12A features an optimized seven heat pipe layout with a 37% more fin surface area when compared to his brother U12S and a dual push-pull fan configuration with their new state-of-the-art NFA12 by 25 fans that has claimed its throne in the DBA and performance charts in the market. However, Noctua's throne may be pushed over by Fantech's new case fan called the T30, which is supposed to make um, the u 12 era have a run for its money. And if you guys are interested in a video comparing these two, leave a comment in the comment section down below and I might make a comparison feature in the video. Now coming back to the cooler, Noctua has made sure that this cooler would have 100% round compatibility with new Intel 11th gen uh, CPUs and AM4 motherboards. However, if you're concerned about your specific motherboard, Noctua does have a compatibility chart for their coolers on the website, which I'll leave in the description box down below. Now, before we get onto the benchmarks, I do have to point out that this new Noctua U12A Chromax edition is very nice. And honestly, it will fit in many uh, gaming PCs or modern PCs if you're building one. Unlike the past coolers of Noctua's, brown tan D15s and the U12S, this is actually something you wouldn't be embarrassed to put in your PC, or at least you wouldn't want to hide it away. Now moving forward to the testing methodology of the CPU cooler, we're running the Cinebench R23 benchmark and the Shadow of Tomb Raider gaming benchmark. And the CPU in question is gonna be the 5600X at stock settings with 32 gigabytes of RAM. And for the test bench, we're using our Fractal Mesterified 2 compact case with the side panels off and all other fans turned off to keep the test consistent. And as you can see with the results here, the coolers are pretty close in performance with the D15S pulling slightly ahead with the two degrees Celsius advantage at 73C versus the 75 at 36.4 dBA. And when comparing both coolers at their maximum RPM fan speeds, the results change with the opposite leaning towards the U12A pulling ahead with a two degrees Celsius advantage However, it is coming at a much louder DPA, reading at a 47.2 compared to the 41.5 of the D15S. And to be honest, this wasn't all surprising since the U12A has newer fans running at a higher RPM of 2000 while also having two fans versus the one fan on the D15S. Now, during the Shadow of Tomb Raider benchmark, both coolers had about the same performance with the U12A performing slightly better with a one degree Celsius difference. Now, the question is, is the new U12A worth it? And especially the Chromax version with its Chromax tax. At the time of filming, the price of the U12A is coming in at 140 Canadian dollars and the Chromax coming in at 170. See, this is a large price difference compared to its competition, which is generally hovering around 100 to 120 Canadian dollars for a premium air cooler. So really, the answer is not really clear and cut. And while you can get a better performing cooler at $170, such as the Arctic Freezer 2 360, this does have its benefits, such as its smaller form factor, noise to performance, and less parts to fill over time. And also, generally, you won't see any performance degradation that you would see compared to an AIO, and this gives you a peace of mind of having zero leaks in your case. All in all, this is a very premium feeling cooler with a price tag to match. If you guys like this type of video, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section down below, and perhaps giving this video a like, and possibly subscribing to our channel. It helps out a lot. And lastly, this is BB Tech signing out. Peace.